During General Conference in April of 2021, there were 20 new LDS temples announced. Now, this isn't really strange as there are new temples being announced at every General Conference. And Latter-day Saints are generally proud of their temples being present in cities across the globe. But did you know that building multiple temples is actually something that scripture considers to be wicked? Here are three reasons why that's the case. Number one, there was only ever one authorized temple. Upon entering into the promised land, God commanded Israel to drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their figured stones and destroy all their metal images and demolish all their high places. The land of Canaan had many places of worship dedicated to the worship of false gods. God did not want his people to be like the Canaanites. He didn't want them simply repurposing these places of worship in order to worship him. Therefore, God commanded them to worship him at a single location of his choosing. Then to the place that the Lord your God will choose to make his name dwell there. There you shall bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the contribution that you present, and all your finest vow offerings that you vow to the Lord. Take care that you do not offer your burnt offerings at any place that you see, but at the place that the Lord will choose in one of your tribes. There you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I am commanding you. Before the temple was built, God commanded Israel to build a tabernacle. It was the place of God's presence in the midst of the camp of Israel. Until the days of Solomon's temple, the people were only to offer sacrifices at that tabernacle. After the temple was constructed, people were obligated to travel sometimes long distances to get to that singular temple in Jerusalem, the specific place that God had chosen to be worshipped at. Speaking about this temple, this location that God had chosen, Ezekiel 20 says, For on my holy mountain, the mountain height of Israel, declares the Lord God, there all the house of Israel, all of them, shall serve me in the land. There I will accept them, and there I will require your contributions and the choicest of your gifts with all your sacred offerings. Number two, Israel sinned by worshiping God at other temples called high places. King Solomon was committed to serving the Lord in his youth. 1 Kings 3, however, records the one exception to this. It says, Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and made offerings at the high places. Solomon honored God, but he offered sacrifices in locations that God had not authorized. Later in King Solomon's life, he would actually allow these high places to be used as places of worship for false gods in order to appease his many idolatrous wives. These places of the improper worship of God eventually developed into places of idol worship. After the days of Solomon, when the northern kingdom of Israel split from the southern kingdom of Judah, King Jeroboam of Israel knew that the people's hearts would be drawn back to the southern kingdom of Judah because the temple resided in its capital, Jerusalem. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will turn back to the house of David. If this people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn again to their Lord, to Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. And so he also made temples on high places and appointed priests from among all the people who were not of the Levites. To keep his people from needing to visit the enemy capital every year, he constructed new temples called high places. And he also appointed priests who were not of the tribe of Levi. Neither of those things, however, were commanded by God, causing the people to dishonor God by worshiping at false temples and instituting a false priesthood was part of the reason that God judged Jeroboam. There was only one authorized place of worship. To do sacrifices anywhere but the temple in Jerusalem was to reject what God had commanded clearly in his law. 
And we see later on in Israel's history that the kings of both Judah and Israel were judged on the basis of whether or not they removed these high places. Sometimes even faithful kings who removed the worship of false gods displeased God by not removing the high places. When God did eventually destroy Israel and Judah, he did so partially because of the existence of these false places of worship. Number three, we don't need a physical temple anymore. The Old Testament temple existed for people to offer sacrifices to God. There were never any sealings or endowment ceremonies or even baptisms performed at the temple. This is why we don't need temples anymore because we don't need to continue offering recurring sacrifices. The New Testament teaches that Jesus is our once for all sacrifice and that Christians are now God's dwelling place on earth. To put it clearly, the need for a temple no longer exists. But let's just say, hypothetically, we were to still need a modern temple, just hypothetically. If that were the case, there would only be one authorized location for it. Jerusalem. The LDS Church has no such temple in Jerusalem. Additionally, the false practices of the LDS temples are the basis of the false gospel of Mormonism, which teaches that men need to make themselves worthy to enter God's kingdom. But the gospel of Jesus says that whoever puts their trust in Jesus alone for their worthiness will not perish, but shall have eternal life. 